Hello and welcome to this topic, Learning from Lessons, using the free planner tool from the team at Project in a Box. So uh, we're going to talk here about how you can improve your lessons learnt management process. Uh, so to be successful, really, you have to follow two fundamental steps. The first one is to identify the lessons from your current and past projects, which may help with future projects. That's a pretty big challenge in itself, but it is the thing that most organizations do to some degree. They have um, post-project reviews and end-project reports and lessons logs in their projects which are designed to capture that sort of information. But the really tricky bit is getting your following projects to consider and act upon those lessons at the appropriate time. It's a bit organizations everywhere really seem to struggle with. So we've got a solution for you and it's built around the planner tool. Planner is a completely free application we provide. You can use it forever, whatever sort of organization you are, commercial, uh, public sector, third sector, individual, anyone can use Planner. Um, and Planner supports task management for plans, uh, costs and resourcing, risk and issue management. Um, and it can support all of those things or just one of them. So we've provided a risk template for Planner. Um, and in it, it has 47 standard risk types and these are derived from lessons uh, from lots of different projects uh, from the sort of experience that we've had as a team uh, we've seen customers have um, and also picked up from the sort of general uh, information showing that people do online so a generic set of issues not particularly industry uh, focused not particularly type of project focused or regional focused just generic sort of lessons that people will have learned from previous projects turned into a perspective if you like set of risks and what you can do is you can take that prospective set of risks which are distributed across different types commercial uh, organization technical environmental etc and convert that into the risk profile for your new project this means that your project team are looking at typical sorts of things that might affect a project uh, which are the lessons coming out of previous project problems and addressing them to their project they're thinking oh, as we start our project okay which of these apply here and they can go through deleting the ones that don't apply um, and scoring and putting in place mitigations and actions to address the ones that do apply um, and this is a really good process because you can then come and look later at the risk register for the project and see which ones they think have applied and which ones haven't applied um, and that allows you to understand their uh, the process they've been going through how well they've addressed that etc so it's a fairly set, straightforward sort of idea. Of course, you can use this as many times as you want to. Uh, and because this is Planner and it's an open, free tool, you can actually, of course, use this to help address point one. Um, as you start to, with our list of 47, and you do this in your organization a few times, you're going to say, well, actually, there's some other ones you've identified. You can start changing that default list so that people, when they start addressing it next time, have 50 or 60 or 70, or perhaps just 10 or 15 for different types of projects that you're running. So you can make this your own process um, and it'll help you collect and standardize and manage all that data that you have um, around lessons and then turning that into risks and of course out of risks into actions that are addressing those problems or potential problems in your projects. So let's go and have a look at that in practice. Okay, so on my, on my desktop here, um, we need to use Planner. Uh, Planner, as I say, is a free tool. Uh, we'll give you a link later for where you can download that from our website. Um, if you have Planner installed, you will see uh, this sort of icon on your Planner files. Here's my risk register with lessons included. And this is the file you can download from the blog post. So if I just double click on that, it's going to open in Planner. For those people who are familiar with Planner already, um, some people will be used to it opening as a plan, others as an issue register, others as a risk register, others where you've got all three of those modes here. But here it's just a risk register. Um, it's also, although there's got quite a large set of data that we collect for Planner, we're only seeing a certain number of those fields first up here. So that's actually controlled by what we call a view. Um, and we have a range of different views which are available in the menu up here. We'll come back and talk about those in a minute. So what we can see here are our standard 47 uh, lessons put in as potential risks to the project. They're all tagged here with lesson as a type. 
Um, and we can see they're appearing on our summary table up here. We've got 47 in total. Uh, they're all set as open, so they might be affecting the project, none under action or closed. And we can see how they group up here. And in fact, if we just pop the chart out, we can see how they distribute as well across the standard categories. Standard categories, uh, statuses, etc., all available for you to change should you want to. But we've provided you with a starting set. So we can come into each of the items and consider it. We'll just simply double click on it. Uh, we can see here it's categorized as commercial. It's got a cause, poor costings. Um, it could, if we wanted to, have an event and an effect, if you want to make that a bit more sophisticated. Um, it's currently owned by the project manager. It's a lesson and it's open. In the comment area, we've got some advice that makes you perhaps prompts you around the subject area, makes you think about the sort of things and how it might apply to you. Um, in this case, we might say, um, this particular one is of relevance to us. We think it might be possible that poor costing exercises have been undertaken on some of our um, planned activities. Um, and so in that case, I can copy that item. I mean, there are several ways of doing this, of course. I could just edit that item, uh, put in the relevant information and saving it. That means I can't come back and look at it later. What we would ideally advise is for you to copy items into the register so you can always come back and use this as a checklist. You can revisit it again and again, perhaps at stage boundaries or important parts of the project. So what I'm going to do is come back and copy this one item here. So I'll copy it and paste it into the plan. And we'll now have a new item, copy of poor costings. So I can uh, edit that one. And it's going to open the risk form for me again as it was before. Of course, now I'm going to give it a different name. So I'm going to say um, uh, costing of uh, land purchase may need work. So we've got a derivative version of that uh, of that particular lesson applied to this particular project. I can, of course, come in. I could either keep that comment or I could add my own comments about what it is I'm going to do. And I can then start to assign this to people. So I, it could be the project manager, generically. Um, in practice, it's more likely to be me. So I can put that in like that. Um, and that's going to build up a list of people. Or I can pick other people from the list, etc. Um, I can obviously fill all that out in a bit more with a bit more information. A particular thing we want to do is to score our risk. So we have this model uh, of impact probability proximity uh, that you can score against and you can score an expected value for the risk as well. It has inherent and residual so I can identify that I think the impact of this could be very high. Uh, the probability of it is certainly possible and we can categorize these again you can change these if you want to but this is our standard 5 by 5 impact probability model we can also note proximity if we want to it's not actually included in the scoring model here but it just allows us to get a feel for how um, how our you know when our risks may come to bite us and we can put in a value if we want to well it could cost us as much as that could be quite an expensive one. Now you'll see that inherent and residual are tied together initially when we first identify the risk it's the same everywhere um, as we start to put some actions in place later on to address it that might change but for the moment we'll leave it like that so I've got my new item there um, in fact the other thing I probably want to do is to identify that it's not a lesson anymore it's now a proper just a risk so I'm detagging that and we'll see it now disappears from this list here because it's not included in my um, filtered list which are just showing the lessons so I've just got the lessons showing in this list um, if in fact I then go off and want to see the actual risks that I've been created from this reference lessons list I can do that by changing the view I'm using so a view is filtering this to be 47 from the original 49 and if I can come and do select a view I can come and do exclude lessons so I just see my risks and it's going to go away reapply all those filters and give me just the one so I've got one I put in earlier and I've got a new one here cost of land purchase and I can go through adding more and more like that and here we're now starting to build up our our new risk register we've still got our lessons um, sat there as a reference set that we can come back and use anytime we want to um, but we're building up a risk register here and of course 
the analysis around this, the charts on this, and the uh, the statistics that we're going to calculate from here, etc., are going to be based just on the content that we're looking at, the filtered content at this point. Um, of course, as we start to develop our risks, and they don't necessarily um, they're not just open and identified, but we start to address them. We might be writing a description about what, what, what actions we're undertaking. We might be formally managing some responses. So I'm going to do something to say, well, let's try and avoid this by uh, revaluing or buying early. Like that. Um, and I'm going to make somebody responsible for that. Of course, those names have now been added to this list. And uh, we're under action here, so we're doing this. When are we going to do it by? So it's going to manage all those sorts of things for us as well. We can, of course, have multiple responses to risk if we want to um, and manage all those independently. And as we then come in, we can say, well, actually, now our what was an inherent risk, we can now, as we're actioning it and managing it, we can start to say, well, perhaps that's less significant now um, and it might even bring it back into a a much lower categorization so and it might therefore be costing us less so we can start to collect those sort of statistics about what we're actually doing to address the risks so here we've got a really good flow of identifying the lessons in other projects bringing them through um, and having those pre-standardized or filtered set of possible lessons that might apply to your project shown to you in your register you can then go through and pick the ones that are relevant to you and then start to manage them formally through your uh, through your project. Um, of course at the end of this project you've got a really good opportunity here to grab some of these things and throw them back into your standard register for use as lessons in future projects and of course there that constant organizational learning comes in that's a really useful thing to start moving you up the um, maturity frameworks um, learning the lessons of previous projects and really applying them properly to your next project. So let's just wrap up with a final slide. Uh, contact details here if you want to come and talk to us. Here's a QR code. You can use your phone to pick that up and register for a planner directly from this video. Uh, of course on the blog post uh, you can do that as well and you can also grab the standard register file here with the 47 risks. Um, you know, we do Planner and Community Edition as community type products. Um, they're there for everybody to use and do things useful with. Uh, if you've got some suggestions for extra risks uh, to be included as lessons in the register, just let us know and we'll be delighted to uh, make those available to everybody else. Okay, thank you very much.